Hey folks, uh, this uh, lesson is we're graphing the sine and cosine graphs, the sine and cosine waves actually. So I think I'm splitting this up into three parts, you guys. So this is part one. It's a pretty pretty heavy unit. It's not hard. It's just there's a lot to it. So anyway, so what are the key features of the graphs of the sine and cosine functions? Okay, so let's go ahead and graph uh, y equals the sine of x okay so remember um, uh, in the last unit we we had this circle that went around here and over here on the x-axis was at 1 0 and up here was at 0 1 this was at negative 1 0 and this was at 0 negative 1 do you remember that right there and then we always represented the cosine first and the sine second because the cosine is x and the sine is y. So cosine went 3, 2, 1, which was root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2, root 1 over 2. The sine went 1, 2, 3, which is 1 over 2, root 2 over 2, and root 3 over 2. And then same over here. And then we did all students take calculus. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just, we're just going to do the pi over 4s. Okay. So we'll do um, 0, then pi over 2, then pi, then pi over 4. So let's plug these in for our x's right here. All right. So the, uh, the sine, the sine wave uh, is root 2 over 2. This is in quadrant 1. The sine at, at pi over 2 is up here, so it was at the ordered pair 0, 1. The sine is 1. Okay, and then this is in quadrant 2. Sine is positive, so it's uh, root 2 over 2. And then the sine of pi was negative, or 0. This was negative root 2 over 2. This was negative 1. This was root negative root 2 over 2. And and uh, what's that zero right there okay so um, uh, it gives us these as decimals this is root 2 over 2 as a decimal so root 2 over 2 and so here's quadrant 3 it's negative here's quadrant 4 it's negative so as we're going around the circle and then what we're going to do is set up an x y axis so here's all the x's we're going to plug in and here's all the y's we're going to plug in okay now notice the y's only go up to the maximum is 1 and the minimum is negative 1 so I only made it go up to 1 and then down to negative 1 and remember when we do a whole circle it starts all over so as soon as you do 2 pi it just starts all over so these numbers just start repeating themselves as we start going around the circle more and more and more all right, so let's cut these guys in half. So from zero to pi is going to be pi over um, uh, pi over two right there, and from here to here it's going to be three pi over two. This is two pi over two. All right, now we're going to cut these guys in half. Okay, so if this is pi over two, this is going to be pi over four. Okay, and this is two pi over four, so this will be three pi over four, four pi over four, five pi over four, six pi over four, seven pi over four, and so on. Okay, I'm doing this on my prep. I don't know if you can hear the class next door they have a lot of energy there all right so when we graph these points I'm gonna graph 0 0 right there I'm gonna graph pi over 4 up 7.7 .7, so it's right about there okay pi over 2 is up at 1 okay and then uh, 3 pi over 4 is down at 0 0.707 and then uh, this is 0 this is negative 0 0.707, this is negative 1, negative 0 0.707, and 0. Okay, and what happens is, is it makes that graph right there. And that graph keeps continuing in that pattern because you're just going around the circle, around the circle, around the circle. So that pattern continues and it's called a period. So one period um, uh, is graphed in the sine wave in 2 pi radians, okay? And it just keeps continuing and continuing for the next 2 pi, for the next 2 pi, and 2 pi this way, okay? All right, so here are some properties of the sine curve, okay? The domain, I'm sorry, the period is 2 pi, so one, ha one cycle happens in 2 pi. This is the same cycle over here, happened in 2 pi. So the period, um, it happens in 2 pi. So the domain is all real numbers. Domain is left and right movement, all real numbers. What's the range? The range is up and down. It goes down to negative 1 and up to positive 1 right there. So the range is between negative 1 and positive 1. And here's the trick, you guys, okay? I'm going to get a, a, a whiteboard pin here. So, so um, uh, the, it goes like this. Here's the trick. It's star on, on a period of 2 pi. I'm going to get a bigger one here. It's, that's pretty big. It starts and ends at 0, halfway at 0, halfway at positive 1, halfway at negative 1. There's our graph. 
Okay, so starts and ends at zero, halfway at zero, halfway at one, halfway at negative one. All right, so let's graph our y equals the sine of x from three pi to five pi. Okay, that is um, one complete cycle, but we gotta see, we gotta remember what this cycle does, okay? So here's the, uh, the sine wave, okay? So it starts and ends at zero. I'm not gonna get that big, so let's do that again. So it starts and ends at zero, so starts and ends ends at zero, halfway at zero, halfway at one, halfway at negative one, and then trace the graph, and then it happens again. So if I went out another way to another two pi, it's gonna it's gonna start again. Start and end at zero, halfway at zero, halfway at one, halfway at negative one. Okay, so it's gonna make that graph continue again and again and again. So we want to go from 3 pi to 4 pi, thank you. We want to go from 3 pi to 5 pi, so we're going to go from here to here, over here to uh, 5 pi, so it's going to go, it's going to start here and go down and then go up and go back down again. So they do a little springboard kind of thing right here, and this little springboard just kind of says that we're just we're springing it up to 3 pi and then remember it went down and then went up so that's the kind of graph we're kind of looking at right there i mean you can you can go all the way out from 0 all the way out to 5 pi but you want to highlight the area that we're dealing so it says graph only from 3 pi to 5 pi and it would be that graph right there okay all right let's graph cosine okay so we'll set up those same values right there okay and so when we uh, test those. Remember, cosine goes 3, 2, 1. So this is uh, root 2 over 2 also. So this is 0 0.707. But this is the cosine of 0. Remember, you've got this circle right here. So the 0 is over here at 1, 0. So the cosine is 1. This is 0 0.707. The cosine of pi over 2. This is at the ordered pair 0, 1. So the cosine of that is 0. This is in quadrant 3. Cosine is negative 0 0.707. This is at the order pair negative 1, 0, so cosine is negative 1. This is negative 0 0.707. This is 0. This is positive 0 0.707. This is in quadrant 4 where C is positive. All students take calculus. Remember that? Okay, so we get that. So let's go ahead and graph those. So I'm going to graph 0, 1. It starts up here. And then pi over 4, 0 0.707 is right there. Pi over 2, 0. Negative 0 0.707, negative 1. This is pi equals negative 1. Negative 0 0.707, here's 0, here's 0 0.707, here's 1, okay? So it's just making that graph right there. And then we've done the whole circle, and we're starting back at 2 pi now. So from 2 pi, it's going to follow that same pattern, okay? So that's our period right there. In cosine, one period is also in 2 pi right there. All right, so the properties of a sine curve. Okay, let's get my pen out right here. Okay, so the domain is all real numbers because it goes left and right forever. Okay, the period is 2 pi. The range is from negative 1 to positive 1 inclusively. That means it's they're included in there. And then here's the trick. It starts and ends at 1. Starts and ends at 1. There's my period right there in 2 pi. Halfway at negative 1 halfway at zero. That's how it works. It starts and ends at one, halfway at negative one, halfway at zero, and it just keeps going. So I go over here, starts and ends, this would be four pi at one, halfway at negative one, that would be three pi, and then halfway at zero, okay? What's this right here? This is pi over two. This is two pi over two, three pi over two, four pi over two, five pi over two, and so on, okay? All right, so it just keeps going and going and going and going and going, okay? All right, so there's our cycle for uh, cosine right there, okay? So the amplitude is the number that's in front. The amplitude makes it stretch up taller or, or compress it down smaller, okay? And your amplitude is always the absolute value of that guy right there, okay? So the A is the multiplier of the range, okay? So let's graph this guy, okay? Let's remind ourselves what cosine does. Cosine starts and ends at one. So I'm gonna go start it and end it at one. So it goes right here on, on two pi to here. It's halfway at negative one. Oh, my, my cursor's not working all of a sudden. Sorry, it's gonna drag it down, sorry. It's halfway at, I know what I'll do, I'll take that off. Halfway at negative one. So it's gonna be right there. My 
and then halfway at zero. So there's our cosine curve right there, okay? Starts and ends at one, halfway at negative one, halfway at zero, okay? But this one, this one's gonna, since it's a four, then we multiply all these by four. So starts and ends at four, okay? Halfway at negative four, okay? So notice it's taller now, okay? So starting and ending at four, halfway at negative four, and then halfway at zero, okay? It's just a taller cosine graph right there. All right, okay, let's graph this guy. Okay, let's remind ourselves about sine. Sine starts and ends at zero. So it starts and ends at zero. Halfway at zero, halfway at one, halfway at negative one. Okay, there's our sine curve. Starts and ends at zero, halfway at zero, halfway at one, halfway at negative one. All right, now this just means that we're gonna multiply all of those numbers by negative one half. So it's still gonna start and end at zero, but instead of being, and then halfway at zero, but instead of being halfway at one, we're gonna multiply it by a negative one half. So it's gonna be halfway at negative a half, and then halfway at positive a half, okay? So there would be our, our graph right there, okay? All right, now the period is determined by the number that's in front of the angle measure. So if the, uh, the period of y equals cosine of kx, this tells me how many periods we have in 2 pi. Because it's always in pi, so what we do is we take that number in front and divide it into 2 pi. Okay, so here we go. State the amplitude and the period for each one. Okay, well the amplitudes are easy. The amplitudes are these numbers, the absolute values actually. So uh, it's five and one half right there. Okay, so on this guy, this says there's two periods in two pi. So if there's two periods in two pi, then we'd like dividing by two, there'd be one period in pi. So then we'd start it and end it at one, halfway at negative one, except it'd be five. Start and end at five, halfway at negative five, and then halfway at zeros, okay? So uh, from zero to pi, so the whole period, it's going to be squished in, okay? Well, we're going to graph that, don't worry. This one, there's four periods in two pi, so we take that two pi and divide it by four right here, so that comes out to be one period in pi over two, all right? So let's, um, and now, if we had a negative in front of that, um, uh, the amplitude is still positive 5. It's always the absolute value of that, okay? All right, so let's graph those functions right there, okay? So remember the amplitude is 5, and the period is uh, 1 period happens, uh, uh, the cosine period happens in 1 pi. So start at end at 1, halfway at negative 1, but it's 5 and negative 5. Here, um, the one period is in pi over two, so this one's gonna be all squished together, okay? So here we go, so there it is. It's gonna start and end at five, halfway at negative five. So remember, from zero to pi, that's my cycle, so it's making it a skinnier one. So starts and ends at five, halfway at negative five, halfway at zero, okay? And I can do it again. From the next uh, pi to two pi, it's gonna start and end at five, halfway at negative five, halfway at zero. There it is right there. Ain't that a beauty? Huh? All right, so this one's gonna uh, start and end at zero. That's what sine does, starts and ends at zero, half at one, halfway at negative one, but we're gonna multiply it by a half, okay? And remember, we're doing the period from zero to pi over two. Okay, now I could have done it out to 2 pi again. Now, if your period is less than a pi, you guys, if it's less than 1 pi, always graph 2 pi. Always graph at least 2 pi. If your period isn't 2 pi, you're good. But if it's less than that, then um, uh, always graph it in you know, at least 2 pi length right there. All right, uh, I can't forget about this. If this will, uh, let's, I'll come back to that. Let's graph this real quick, okay? So this is going from, so the period's doing, happen in, in this pi right here, okay? So we're gonna start it and end it at zero, and we're gonna be halfway at zero, and then it's gonna be halfway at one, but it's gonna be at a half, so it's gonna be right there, and halfway at negative a half right there, okay? So start and end at zero, halfway at zero, halfway at a half, halfway at negative a half. There's one cycle right there, okay? We're going to do this. We're going to show four different cycles because it's going to cover two pi. So there it is right there, and there's that right there. Now, if, if um, let me go back to this real quick, right here, right here. Okay, here this says there's four periods in two pi. If that was, say, a half, then there would be a half a period in two pi. 
So when I take 2 pi and divide it by a half, it's like inverting and multiplying. And so there would be one full period in 4 pi. Okay, so if that was a fraction, then we're going to multiply that denominator times that. Okay, so let's say this was uh, one-third. Okay, say that 4 was one-third. Then there would be one-third uh, of a period in 2 pi. So we'd multiply by 3 and get one period in 6 pi. So you'd have to stretch that out to 6 pi. Okay, you guys, if you are in my class, I'm going to give you that. Take care.